This is Intel's i9-13900KS processor, their specially binned processor that runs at 6 GHz. It works perfectly fine, so of course, let's crack it open. This is the EK Quantum Velocity Squared CPU water block for direct die cooling of an Intel 13900KS processor, or 13th gen in general. This is the D-Lid tool, so we're going to use this to crack open this processor. Let's get started. This will work for Intel 12th and 13th gen, but for 12th gen, there's actually an added thing that we can take off because this is a 13th gen processor. It's these little knobby things right here. We can remove those because the 12th and 13th gen processors have SMDs that are kind of in slightly different places. So you can't move the IHS as much on the 12th gen as you can the 13th gen. And so these help to prevent too much movement on the 12th gen. So we can just take both of these off and it'll make it quicker for this i9-13900KS processor. Both screws are now removed. And so now we have a lot more space over here to move the IHS back and forth for the 13th gen processor. On the D-LED tool, you'll see there's a one and a two right there. And on the slider, there's a corresponding one right here. And then on the flip side, literally, there's a corresponding two right there. So you always want them on top of each other. And that is going to make things nice and simple for you. One over one, two over two. If we can get in there. There we go. Here is the i9-13900KS processor. So this is the one that's specially binned by Intel. It will hit six gigahertz out the box if you have proper cooling. And so that's why we're doing this actually, to get even better cooling. So we're just going to slide this in right here. And you're gonna notice the arrow is gonna be at the one right here. And then we're going to apply this to slide on in. So the one is gonna be on the one, slide like that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put this screw in. We're going to actually do something a little old school. I'm gonna heat this up first to make the glue that's around kind of the uh, underneath of the IHS, holding the IHS to the substrate. We're gonna make that softer as well as the indium. We're gonna make that a little softer as well. I'm gonna use this handheld heater and this is gonna allow this to help kind of make everything softer inside of this CPU. So we want the indium to be a little bit softer as well as the glue, the black glue that's around here. You'll see that in a little bit later. Uh, that needs to be a bit softened as well. This definitely takes a little while. You wanna make sure that this heat really does get soaked in and things get nice and soft. So this could be a good 10 minutes. And so we've been just over 140 degrees Fahrenheit for a little while. And so we're gonna make our first couple of turns here. And this is something that you just wanna be assertive on. There we go. Just had a little bit of give right there. This is definitely nice and hot. And I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit and here you can actually see the black glue that I was speaking of and how the whole IHS is shifted forward this way or to the right so now we have to take this out flip it around and do kind of the number two arrows now the direct die kit is still a bit hot but now we're at number two flip this over try not to burn myself slides right in nicely And yes, the screw is still hot. <laughs> this is actually fairly easy right now. Very little resistance. Rinse and repeat. And so we're gonna put this in position one, just one more time to have the lid kind of hanging off. So we're looking for position one. So it's this side here, slide this on. Put in the screw, start turning, and yeah, this is nice and easy, very little resistance here. 
slide this out and you'll see it's offset. We're going to try to take the IHS off of the substrate and the die. So you'll notice how we have the black glue right there and the IHS is kind of overhanging a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to pry this off a little bit with this little tool. All right, so after enough attempts, you just kind of beat this thing with a stick. And then what you have is the IHS coming off. So this is that black glue that is actually very uh, troublesome to get off. This is the indium, that silverness right in the middle. And now we just have to clean this all up. This is liquid metal conducted by Thermal Grizzly. And we're gonna use this actually to clean off this indium right here because liquid metal has a nice little benefit when it comes to this. It actually does a great job of uh, helping us dissolve it. Notice the surface tension that liquid metal has. It just basically wants to be in nifty little balls. And we're now going to spread this around. It does remind you of the Terminator, doesn't it? And uh, that's actually a nice guy. He lives right by me here in Los Angeles. Owns a motorcycle dealership. We've had cigars together. But that's another story. So basically, I'm spreading this around and then going to let it sit for a few minutes. Come back, wipe this off, rinse and repeat. The liquid metal has been sitting here for a few minutes. And now as we start to scrape the indium off, we can see that it's actually kind of building up here in chunks. Some of it comes off, like you see the chunk right there. And then I can wipe it all down, see how it looks. And if it needs a little bit more treatment, I can actually use this uh, plastic scraper thing, spatula, to scrape a little bit of it off. You know, a little bit of manual labor and then put some more liquid metal on it, let that continue to dissolve some of the indium, and then go back to doing this with the Q-tip and kind of mixing it around, adding some pressure, getting down to the base of the die eventually. So this is how you delid a 12th and 13th gen Intel processor. You'll notice the black ring around here, this is where the glue was, is pretty much all gone. It's actually, completely smooth if you can see from this angle it's just kind of stained on there so you can't even feel it with your finger anymore and then the indium it kind of scars the dye but that is also completely flat and smooth and there is a direct dye kit by EKWB that I'm going to be using so it's going to be liquid metal on here liquid metal on the direct dye kit because of the surface tension you have to put liquid metal on both slaps down on the top and uh, so you'll just have to like and subscribe and follow and watch the next video when I do that. So this was the Thermal Electric Cooler 13900KS processor that I was using. It was over here. So Thermal Electric Cooling is nice because it's sub-ambient temperatures for that cooler, meaning it can hit, say, 10 degrees Celsius. And if the 13900KS processor wants to hit 100, it's going to bring it down to like 60 or 50 or 40, depending on the workload. So it's a really nice cooler, but it's not really made for sustained long-term workloads, like long rendering sessions, perfectly fine for gaming. Um, not really good for benchmarking because of those long, uh, high load temps that you'll actually get eventually. So direct dye is really nice for doing all of that. Plus, you don't have to add electricity. When it comes to the thermoelectric cooler, you're basically putting in a couple of hundred watts of electricity in these what they call a ceramic tiles basically that suck the heat away from the IHS of that 13900KS processor. Now we're kind of side sk skipping that or whatever the term is where we're actually just removing the IHS putting a new cooler directly on the die and that eliminates a lot of the uh, resistance when it comes to thermal transfer. So it's going straight from the die to the cooler. Very nice. So stay tuned.